Okay, welcome everybody to today's member site reviews, take two. So we're glad that you can join us. Um, if you're on the page and you found the page, uh, if you are here, we'd love for you to log in to the chat roll and come join the conversation. I see a couple people already in there. And feel free to join us. We've got seven blogs that we're going to review today. And I think what's been great and the, the, the biggest feedback that I've gotten through this process is how we can learn just by watching and taking a look at what other people are doing. So I know I've learned a few things just looking at what you guys are doing on your own blogs. And we can kind of take the best practices from what everybody's doing and make a killer site. Not only that, but we get a chance to share plugins and tips and advice and resources and all kinds of, of good things. So um, before we kind of jump in and do some housekeeping, let me say hello on the video. So I hope you guys are having a terrific Wednesday. And we are going to have fun for the next hour. We're just going to, I've already got the blogs kind of lined up. I've got seven so far. If you are here live and you want me to review your blog, then I'd be happy to do that. So just put it in the chat or mention that in the comments. And I'd be happy to take a look at it and give you my two cents. See if maybe I can help you with having a blog that connects better. So let's jump back into our notes. And we will go through a few things. Um, first off, I just wanted to kind of fill you in on this uh, because this is coming down the pike pretty quickly. One of the most requested um, things that I get, either feedback from students or from other people, is that they would love to learn a repeatable process for how to create products or how to create a course uh, to sell online. And um, it's something that I've been wanting to teach for a while. Uh, it's not something that uh, you can just watch one video and you're good to go. It's, it takes um, a lot more time and energy and effort, and um, but it's great. It's, it's a fun process, and so I'm really excited about this. It's going to start on February 12th. As a member of Blogging Your Passion University, you guys don't need to do anything more to benefit from this. Um, you'll start to hear me release some videos and content uh, out there in the public because I will open the doors for about a week uh, to allow more people to come in and join us in the fun. And then I'm going to focus on helping you guys over the next 90 days. We're going to dive headfirst into this idea and really help you with this. Um, I did a survey, got a great response. I probably, I was just looking through it this morning, I had over 130 responses of people sharing with me their challenges, their obstacles, the, the things that they're kind of bumping up against when it comes to creating and selling a product online. And so I'm going to tackle all those head on in a few videos that I'm going to produce for the audience, uh, the large public audience, and you'll see some of that. And then we're going to buckle down on February the 12th, and each week you're going to get a step-by-step -step repeatable process for how I've gone through and created products, but not just one type of way, but I'm going to show you different ways I've done it. So I think you'll really latch on to one, and you'll have the blueprint, the checklist for creating your first product. Maybe it's as simple as an ebook that you can sell. Maybe it's more like a full course that you want to create. Maybe it's a video course, um, a membership site, whatever it is. We're going to cover the different pieces of this, and it's going to be our focus for the months of February, March, and probably a little bit into April. So I think you're going to really get some value out of this because you're going to learn uh, at least the tools and the things that I'm using to, and I have used in the past, to create products and sell products and courses online. So that's going to be fun. So with that, We've got, this is the list that I have that we're going to be going through. I think there's seven here. 
And again, if you're not on the list and you'd like for me, hopefully I can get through all these and get to yours as well. I'd be happy to do that. So um, without further ado, we're just going to jump in and start tackling some of these sites and finding out what people are doing. And those of you in the chat, if you've got tips and advice as well, you can add that in there. Be happy to kind of take some of that as well. So with that, let me make sure I grab the right screen. And the first one we're going to take a look at is Nancy site. And this is nelsonsewing.com. So this blog looks like it's all about sewing and crafts. Uh, the first thing I like is I do like the colors. Kind of got like this brown chocolate and a nice, easy on the eyes orange. Um, so I like that. I like your header here. Um, uh, I like the headlines and the font is easy to read. Um, you got the pin it button going on, so that's great. Uh, looks like looks like you got Twitter and Facebook. Um, maybe. Now, I don't, I'm not a fan of having, like, all of them covered, but you may think about, and maybe this is it, maybe your audience is Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. I'm, I can imagine Pinterest would be a nice one with some of these pictures that you have. Um, so that looks good. I like the, the feel and the simplicity of it. Looks like you've got a, a wrong size ad that's going over here, kind of out of the way. You might want to take a look at that uh, and see if you can do something different there. Um, let's see here. So yeah, I think that that looks good. Um, and I know you're probably working on this, but I, I just kind of reemphasize this is a great place to start. But I would think about moving this uh, either to MailChimp or get response is a good one and start um, collecting more email addresses. I can imagine that that would be good for you. Um, and I'm sure you've got something that you can turn into a, a lead capturing thing from all of this, depending on who your target audience is. You probably give your top 10. And again, you probably use a collection of blog posts or do something very simple, or you could do a, a little quick ebook on how to start your own sewing business if you wanted. Um, so that is that's what I would recommend. Um, let's see. Uh, let me jump around here a little bit. So it looks like you got. This looks like a different logo, which is fine. I'd like to see your picture. I think that would be great to put on here. Even more so than your, your logo here, it would be a picture. Because you say it's about me, and you mention your name. It just helps with people kind of connecting with you. They can see you. It, it makes it more friendly. It makes it more personal. Um, you want them to, to kind of become attached to you. So in your About Me page, I'd really strongly urge you to, to maybe switch that out for a picture. Um, and also, the About page is a great place to, to capture email addresses. So uh, you might want to think about adding something there as well. Uh, of course, the Contact Us, I'm sure you got a form here. And you might get more description, you know, if you... I mean, I see that you got a services page, I guess. So that may be where you kind of describe some of your services. Yeah, I would say here you need a contact form on this page. Um, at the very least. I mean, I see your phone number up here, but I would either repeat that or make it clear if you do these things and talking about what you're offering. 
I would make a contact form or something, a way for somebody to reach out to you here. All right. Um, you know, the other thing I'm thinking about with this site, and this, not just for sewing, but in this, the anything that's related to how-to, I'd strongly encourage you, I'd strongly encourage you, Nancy, to, to think about YouTube. Um, I know some people have their hesitations about getting behind the camera, but you could just totally focus on your own work. Um, so, for example, see this How to Hem Jeans? Let me, let me jump over to YouTube. Let's do a search here. So take a look at this. I know this was like three years ago, but even this one nine months ago. Look at this, um, How to Hem Your Jeans. Okay, 154,000 views for this video. And then see how they say from theperfectjeans.com. So they're advertising their site. Same thing here, create a video nine months ago, 240,000 views. So, I mean, that's, your niche is the kind that you could benefit from. And this is as easy as kind of, you know, as you're doing projects and as you're doing things for customers, just record yourself walking through how you're going to fix this or repair that or do that. And then use that terminology in your, um, in your video. You can publish it on your, on your YouTube channel and then include that inside of, of your blog post. So it's like right here. Um, I don't think I'm actually in it. So here I am inside the post. So that kind of those kind of things are like how can you really take something to the next level and add value to somebody? So if somebody wants to know how to hem jeans, you've got some. Yeah, see, this is great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you've done a really good job explaining this. I mean, all these all these steps. I mean, this is this is great. You can figure out how to package that and sell that in some way. These tutorials that you're creating, like this is really good. But what would be awesome is at the end, you actually have a video too. And sometimes you can just go back over some of the some of the ones that you know have gotten the most views. Or you could say, you know, I could actually teach this one again because I'm about to hem some jeans again, and turn on the video and improve this. So again, it looks like you got. Oh yeah, you kind of show the steps here. This is interesting. Huh. I like that too. So again, this is really good, but I'm just showing you a way that you could get some real eyeballs, I think, even more eyeballs on what you're doing. Because look at all these views, you know, 86,000 views, 105,000 views, 153,000 views. And the other thing you could do also, Nancy, if you didn't want to just straight up record a video, is you could do a talking video with the pictures you already have. So I mean, I could use this and say, so step one, this is what I would do. And then meanwhile, you're just recording a screenshot. And then you know the next step is you're going to do this, and you just kind of walk somebody through the steps without even having a live video. You can certainly do that as well, too. So you might want to think about that. Uh, I know it takes a little bit more thinking and effort. You can use a uh, screener, which is the word screen with the letter R, dot com. It's free to use. Um, there's a pro version, but it, um, your first five minute videos. Let me just show that. But your first five minutes are free. And all you gotta do is like click this little record button and then drag the part of the screen that you want to record, speak into a microphone, and then as soon as it's done, you can click the upload to YouTube, boom, it's on YouTube. So this is a free and easy one to use. You can pay for the pro version. I think it gives you up to 15 minutes, if I remember right. But a lot of things you can do in five minutes. 
So a um, nifty little tool uh, that you might want to think about using. So yeah, so that would be my recommendation. Other than that, you know, I think you've got a lot of good things going on here. I just think that there's some ways that you could leverage that, especially on YouTube, to um, build up traffic and build up some interest. So yeah. All right, next one. We're going to jump into Michelle's site called One Fit Earth. And this is a wellness wisdom from around the world. She's a fitness trainer. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through here and kind of give you um, first impressions, Michelle. And some of these maybe you can tackle now, and some of these maybe it just takes a while to tackle it. And again, you don't have to make all the changes that I recommend. These are just kind of first impressions. So um, one of the recommendations I have, and most themes will allow you to turn these on and off. I'm not sure about the one that you're using. But I think this stuff here is a little bit too much. Sometimes you can go in and turn off like the author or the category or the tags. Um, you don't really need this information here because it doesn't really serve anything other than it kind of, to me, gets in the way, especially like here. It just, just seems kind of cluttery a little bit. Um, so it'd be great if you can go in your theme and turn off showing these tags in the theme settings. Um, or you could pay somebody from Odesk or Elance $10 or something to go and take those off. They would know how to get into the to your um, code and remove that. So I would do that. Um, the other thing I'd, I'd think about doing if I were you, uh, I like these, these images. These images are great. I like your headlines. Five ways running makes you smarter. I think that's real attractive. Uh, seven holistic ways, yoga, improve your life. Those are great. Um, I'd like to see, and again, it may look different on the PC. I'm on my Mac, but uh, I'd like to see these titles be a little bit bigger and the fonts uh, a little bit. I wonder, like, if in your theme, if you can change the colors, and I don't know if you can have the opportunity to change the font, but for me, Michelle, this it kind of looks uh, not so easy on the eyes. Um, it almost kind of reminds me those of you that are old school. Um, you know, some of the, when when like publishing your own site first came out, I think it was like GeoCities or Yahoo or something. Um, it's got a. It feels like it's got a little bit older feel to it. Um, so. I'm wondering if just changing the color scheme might help to have maybe a, a white background with black letters. Because see what can happen, what can happen is you like your links aren't really don't really show up as links. And that can be difficult if you want people like to click on a link of yours for an affiliate program or something like that. Um, it can be kind of harder to see. I like that you've got an opt-in box down here, but I think this would look better if it had like maybe a white background to go with it. Um, I'd also add your picture here, uh, and that can actually be done under your WordPress. Let me see. Well, let me see here. I'm just going to jump into one of mine. That can actually be done in your WordPress settings, and you can also use um, gravatar.com. So let me just jump in here and show you guys what I'm talking about, if you don't know how to do this. So this gravatar.com will allow you to kind of change your picture. I don't know which one it has me hooked to. Let's just see what it does. 
Thanks for blogging your passion. So see, this is becomes my default picture that goes with this email address. And you can set that up over at uh, gravatar.com. I can change it to one of these if I wanted it. These are old ones I used to use. So that's kind of step one to associate it with an email address. And then that same email address you want to, with users, probably should have clicked your profile because it's probably going to show a lot of different ones under this. Um, and this is because we have the wish list plugin. So let me just see if it'll do my profile. Oh, let's see if it shows the picture in here. Uh, looks like it's just going to pull from that email address. WordPress updated their... I mean, I just updated the latest WordPress and this looks a little bit different. You used to be able to pick like the picture you wanted to represent. So to me that says Gravatar is going to be your way to go, Michelle. So whatever email address associated with the WordPress profile that you're publishing under, you want to be able to add a picture here over at Gravatar.com. Um, so, so yeah, but I would, I would seriously look at, uh, finding the other thing is I would make this tagline shorter. It seems a bit long. Maybe you can, you can narrow it down a little bit. That would be good. And again, I would, I would think about the, uh, color scheme. Looks like you have the voyage theme. I bet it allows you in the settings to go for a white theme or something that's a little bit easier on the eyes. So that would be my tips for you, Michelle. But I love the content. I love the images. I mean, you're really giving out some terrific content. So all that's great. You're talking about your services and your about and shop. So all right. So that is the recommendations I'd have for you. Just check in the chat. I think everybody's doing all right. Um, okay. No questions so far, so we keep rolling. So the next one is alwaysabby.com. So Always Abby, it's a great domain name. Um, the site's to me is um, it's very cute to look at. It's easy on the eyes. It's simple. Simple can be powerful. It is, um, you got a picture over here. It's just a very warm, inviting picture. Um, so I like the look and feel of this. I wonder if this is the, um, what's it called? The theme here. Powered by WordPress and the Adahalupa, or however you say it. I can never say it, but. That's one of the the themes that we recommend. It's a free theme, but it looks like you've customized it quite a bit. So looks great. It gives you lots of color options if you want to. If you if you, those of you that want just a, a free theme, this may be one to look at. I don't know where this link will take me. But you can. Um, you can Google that, or I'll, I'll try to provide a link for that theme. I know I talk about it in 101 or 201 as an alternative for a, uh, a nice free theme. It's like the pictures you got going here. Those are great. Um, see, having a another thing is sometimes what works well is when you have a white background. 
it makes it a little bit more seamless for some of the advertisements that they just kind of blend in a little bit better and that can be um, good as opposed to um, sticking out or filling out a place if this was you know too dark of a color. Uh, let's see. Let's check the about page. So yeah, so very cute picture sharing some stats. I think you need to, and I know you probably know this, but I think you need to focus on um, building an email list. Like if I had to start over again from day one and I only did one thing well, it would be collecting email addresses because that's the people that you want to be speaking to over and over again. And um, I bet many of you, I mean, here's an example of how powerful email is. Many of you watching right now, or if you're in the chat, or you're watching the recording, answer this question. How did you um, end up in Blogging Your Passion University? If you track it back, it was probably from an email, an email invite from me about uh, that I was going to do this, an email invite about a webinar I was going to have, an email invite about um, maybe a blog post where I talked about starting a, a membership site. So email is incredibly powerful. I bet many of you probably even, um, the way you find out about new blog posts from blogging your passion is not because off the top of your head you thought about what's John been up to, maybe, but I bet many of you are on the email list. So you know when a new um, blog post comes about because of email. So think about your own activity and that is probably true for um, for you as well. So Abby, I think you're doing great. The site is great. It looks good. I would say uh, focus on building an email list would be great. Um, also, this is kind of the same thing that I was talking about last week. You may want to have another um, place over here, because it looks like these are links. You may want to have another place over here where it says uh, blog, because if someone falls into one of these categories and they want to figure out how to get back to the blog, they may not know how to do that. So obviously people who are savvy know they can click on your header and it takes them back to here. But once I'm kind of navigating into your site, I don't know how to get back. So if I were to look at this and say, yeah, I want to read about this blog. And then I decide, hmm, I want to go back to the main page. It makes it a little bit hard. But, I mean, you got the, these pictures are great. Looks like you're getting comments. Definitely, um, and you probably already know this, and this is only from two days ago, but definitely communicate with these people. Uh, comment, it adds more comments, it creates more conversation, and I know you probably already do this, but, I mean, you've got some great engagement here on this blog post. So make sure you're active and you kind of stay active talking to these people who are over here and commenting. Um, the other thing is you may benefit from the, the InRelate plugin. So when people get to the bottom of your, your page that they find something else that they can, can read about that's related. And I think I talked about this last week. I can't remember, but the InRelate plugin can keep people on your site longer, and that helps for you, like your Google search rankings because they will end up um, staying on your site longer and looking at more pages and things like this. Things like that. Remember last week I talked about the uh, that click to tweet plugin. Well, here is that in action. So. Uh, I just pull out a quote, people, and I've already had people um, 
tweet this out today. This is a, a new blog post and podcast, and several people started clicking on these. But it's real simple. They click on that, opens up a new window, and it's already got it all pre-filled in for them with my little um, Twitter in there. So, But what I was going to show you is here at the end, see it says you might also like. So this is an opportunity to get people to jump onto other pages on your site. So, Abby, that might be something you want to think about adding here at the end um, as well. But, yeah, I mean, this looks great. You know, a site that you may want to take a look at, Bob Loddick, who created a lot of the uh, Blogging Your Passion 101, 201, and 301 courses, his wife has like a, a, a lifestyle or fashion blog, Rose a la Mode. Dot com. You might get some great inspiration by taking a look at what she's doing. She's been blogging now for a while, and you can probably pick up on things that she's doing that uh, might be a help to you. So just wanted to point that out to you. So you're doing a great job. Blog looks great. I'm really digging the design and the simplicity and what you have going on over here. So good job. All right, we're gonna keep moving. Let me check the questions. Tanya, do you have to add your Twitter handle to the click to tweet? You actually do that um, if you use the plugin. I think I'm already. Let me find out. Since I'm already in blogging your passion, I'll show it to you. So under settings, you'll find the click to tweet. And this is, again, it's made by uh, Today Made. So if you just, in your WordPress uh, plugin area, when you're doing a search, you know, search for click to tweet, then you, then you can... Um, uh, add the one that says today, today made. I think it's the first one that pops up. But what you do is you put your Twitter handle here, and then it'll always add that in. And then if you use this in your post, then it will automatically turn it into, it's a short code, it'll automatically turn it into what you saw. The other thing about it is it's uh, it works real easy. Let me... Let me see if I, yeah, let me just hit edit on this post and show you this real quick. So here's an easy way, a simple way that you can do this. So it adds this little button right here. And so if I'm looking at this and I say, oh, this is a good quote right here. Let me just do this as an example just to show you. So it's not really a good quote, but I can copy that. Then I could put my cursor like right here because this is where I want that box to show up. And then I can click on this little Twitter icon that's now in my WordPress edit area edit box, and when I click on that, a box pop, pops open and says enter your tweets. Well, I can copy and paste that quote right there, bam, and then there it is. So once I hit publish, then it's going to look like the ones that you just saw, and I don't need to add my Twitter handle. It already does it automatically. So that's how quick and simple and easy it is to, to use the, that plugin. Um, so it saves me a lot of time because I can write my post and I can go through my posts and decide, you know, what was a good quote? Okay, yeah, so that was a good quote. So I'll usually, you know, underneath that point or underneath that paragraph, that's where I'll throw that because, you know, someone's reading it and they see the quote and then they kind of see it again like you would when you read a book sometimes. And then it just encourages them to click it because they just read that quote and then they saw it again. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, K 
Okay, so the next one in our marathon is the littledesignlab.com. So uh, this is a great site. Um, I've been on this site before. I love the, the, this is definitely something you can pin. Six strategies to help you overcome creative block. Love that. Um, so you've got the text going on with the pin it button and the images. That's fantastic. And I think this is great for your overall brand because you talk about design. So obviously you're going to have an aptitude to do this sort of thing. Um, and this is Heather's blog, by the way. And, um, you know, one, one thing you could think about, Heather, is I bet you there's a, there are some bloggers out there, depending on how crazy or busy you are, I bet there's some bloggers out there who would love to tap into some of this talent you have with them letting you know, um, you know, what, what their title of their blog post is, and then you create something like this that can go with their blog post. Uh, it's just, I like that a lot. I like the simplicity of the things you've got going on the side over here. Logo design tip, less is more. Logo versus brand. Create animated videos quickly. These are great. I think in the future, these would be great for, and they may be, I don't know, but these would be great for like products that you have. I'm guessing these are blog posts if I click on them. Other oh, categories, it looks like. Okay, yeah, that's great. But you know, it'd be awesome um, for these to eventually be, you know, creating a logo one on one hundred one course or something like that. Got some testimonials here. So this looks good. Get back to the blog. Um, I wonder about this drop-down menu. I mean, I guess it's okay, but generally, you know, the the number two or the I should say the number one most visited page is your about page, so people generally want to find that. But there you are. I think also you could benefit, let's see, if you need help with your brand, I'd love to talk. So that looks like that's like a contact form. It'd be great if you had like a contact form. You can use contact form 7 as a plugin. It's what I use. That works great. Uh, that put a contact form in here right, right here. I think it might even be a little bit easier. I'm not sure what, maybe that's what that does. Looks like it's, yeah, so it's not even working. So I would do a um, contact form 7, Heather, the plugin, and you can set it up right here, and that way make it easy for people to, to reach out to you. Logo design, branding identity, resources, contact. Let's jump into a blog post. All right, so I love the images at the top. Let's jump inside of here. Of course, I know you're probably working on it, but I see that you got opt-in skin over here. I'd love for you to get something that you can offer, like my top 10 logo design tips for a killer logo or my top 10 tips for a killer logo, or something, whatever your, your, your target audience is, I think you should have a giveaway there. Uh, and again, this might just be because it's on my Mac, but the font seems really small. I personally just like to make it, I think, make it easy for people. Like, you know, if you, if you go over to blogging your passion. 
you'll see that the font once we get into a blog post this is kind of the summary page and there's another click to tweet example make the the font bigger but again it could just because I'm on a Mac MacBook Air and it just seems smaller but it just seems if I were to flip back and forth it just seems a lot smaller but maybe that's just the settings that I'm on I could be wrong um, I like again I like that you've got the the six strategies get those creative sparks flying it's very scannable it's easy to use you've got an engaging question at the end uh, looks like you got the opt-in skin again going on here for that plugin so you know I don't have a lot to say about the the designs and things um, I would like to see you Heather get some clarity on and I think you have since we last talked now that I think about it is to get some real clarity on you know who your audience is and that'll help you kinda of get some some products and courses and things going you know are you designing for small businesses and people are getting going are you teaching people how to to you know kind of a do-it-yourself kind of design um, are you and I think you're you we mean you when we talked last you were talking about focusing on helping creatives so maybe that's what you're starting to get clarity with but overall I think um, yeah I think this looks good uh, I would just kinda take those pointers that I gave you to think about um, alright check in the chat looks like Neil's here hey Neil glad you're here and we're gonna jump into the next one which is Scroll up. The allergysensitivekitchen.com. So this is a big topic. This is a uh, a great niche to be in, and it certainly is something that I know a lot of people are interested in these days. So this is Nancy's site. Um, first thoughts, Nancy would be like. Uh, I'd like for you to to think about finding a better theme. Might be a good idea to remove the date so that uh, you know this date was December second. That was quite a while ago. Um, the reason I say switch theme is because like you have this picture here, and I'm guessing you can't change this picture, but this picture in the top right hand corner doesn't really have anything to do with sensitive. Uh, are gluten-free, dairy-free type food, but you could, I bet you've got, I mean look at all these killer images, you could use one of these great images to go as a header, you know, maybe you've got a, a great image that's like a, a nice spread that you could put up here, but I'm guessing this theme is kind of limiting you from doing so. You might look at that theme that I mentioned earlier, I'll try to put a link in with this video, it's a real simple theme. It allows you to upload your own header, um, and you can choose a lot of different colors and how many uh, uh, columns you want. If you want two columns or three columns, so yeah. So let's look at the about page. So I like to see another picture. I mean, I see a picture over here, but I like to see another picture here. I, I think you should break this down. This is kind of a long paragraph. You may even want to throw some pictures in here to really show people uh, some of the awesome recipes that you have. I see that you got a mailing list over here. It'd be so simple for you to say my, you know, my favorite gluten-free recipes um, or ten gluten-free recipes that you can make under 30 minutes. I mean that kind of stuff. Um, would get people's attention quickly. And not only that, and maybe you've already gone down this road, I, I, I can't always keep it straight, but you know, another big area is Kindle books for this kind of stuff. You know, any kind of recipes or things that you have. Um, recipes are a funny thing because they're, um, from what I've been told, they're not copyrighted. 
So it's kind of free uh, information out there that you can use and you don't have any, at least that's what I've been told before. Um, so you may want to look and, and do some research yourself. Um, Nancy, uh, YouTube might be another great thing for you. And I definitely would, would think about changing the, the theme for sure. Just kind of make it more related to what you're talking about. But these pictures, those look great. It looks like you got the Pinterest pin it button. So I was going to say Pinterest might be a really good one for you. Um, let's see. I would probably reduce the number of the social media buttons I'm showing because that can kind of clutter things up and I don't think more is better. So I would stick with, you know, like printing. Somebody's probably not going to use this to print. Email maybe. Google Plus. Uh, Facebook, obviously, it looks like there's a number of people that shared this on Facebook. Twitter. Of course, Pinterest. Um, but I would look at that. Um, so yeah. One other thing I'm thinking about is you, you may want to check this site out, but I have uh, an acquaintance whose wife started Gluten-Free Cooking School. Maybe you've seen the site before. But they do these cooking classes, but even before they did cooking classes, the ebook that she put together, I mean, they have done, they've had months where they've sold over $10,000 in ebook sales um, just by putting together this, this ebook, Gluten Free Survival Guide. And I bet you can put something together like this. And it's killer. So obviously they've got more that they're adding here now, but um, and don't be overwhelmed by all this. But what I'm trying to say is, you could put some a product together, or just look at what they're doing over here on this. You could do some cooking classes, see how they're doing that. They've got a, you know like a recipe index. Um, this might be just a, a really good model for you to check out and to follow. So, so yeah, give that a look. All right, still continue on in our marathon here. We're going to go to Allotted next, and I think she's here. So Allotted, we're going to take a look at your site next. I'm just checking out the comments here. Yeah, as Tanya makes, up, makes a good point about Pinterest, is putting your logo as a watermark um, on your site or on top of your pictures. Um, I know my wife does that for hers. And let's see if I can find an example. And I think she just uses PicMonkey. Inside PicMonkey, you can... You can change it or adjust it to be like a watermark. Um, her friend did this post, but this will give you an example. You can see how there's this watermark that's over top of the image. And again here, and there, and there. So, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. All right. Allotted to your live with us, and I've got your site here. Hers is Super Working Mum. And looks like you've done some work. I haven't seen it um, like this. So looks like you got a new theme here from what I can remember. If you like this page, let Google know. That's kind of a cool little feature. 
is this the is it a hello bar or add this add this dot com? Yeah, it looks like you can probably move it up there. Optimizing relationships, resources, and time. So you got a tagline going. That's great. Allotted. And it looks like this is kind of want to manage your time. Create with you in mind. Continue to the blog. So using this as a landing page. What you might think about allotted is if you're going to do kind of like a landing page for your home page, you could do what we did for a while, and I may actually go back to this. I've been testing it, doing it, and testing not doing it, and you've probably seen this before. But what you can do is actually turn this into a opt-in page. So, you know, like for the seven secrets to faith, family, and work balance, watch the webinar. You could have that page, uh, or you could have that right here with a um, an email sign up. So I'm just if I were to click on that, let me see where I go. I bet it is a landing page. Let's see. Yep, it sure is. Okay. So a lot of are all those different. Um, landing pages for you? Maybe you could tell me in the chat. But um, so yes, yeah, so if I click on that, it's going to take me here. It's going to say get the free video here, put your name and email. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, Yeah, so you kind of using this as a landing page. I like it. And then you got continue to the blog. So again, there's nothing wrong with your home page not being your blog, but what you want it to be is you want it to serve a purpose. And the purpose is collecting an email address. Um, that's probably the biggest purpose or pointing them to a product or something that you're, you've got going on. All right, so let's jump into the blog. <laughs> Grab a drink of water here. All right. So we got a title, great title, three quick tips. Um Happy New Year self-improvement gift, celebrating 2013. Get organized this Christmas. Okay. Looks like some of these allotted, looks like some of these shows more text before the read more. I don't know if you're putting in the read more tag yourself. Maybe that's why. Um, but it's like this one seems long, and maybe you have a reason for that. This one seems long, and then this one seems kind of short. Um, There's your gift. That's awesome. Get instant access to your free gift. Okay, so yeah, I like that. Got a Google custom search up here. That's good. Let me just jump into this post. Okay, so you're using InstaBuilder, which is a paid plugin for your opt-in landing page. 
Yeah, I would just shorten some of those read more tags um, just so that it kind of has a, a uniformity to it. Um, and if those of you don't know what read more is, you can actually do, you can control what you want to have shown um, on your blog page, or you can just choose to have, um, sometimes your theme will automatically just kind of cut it off at a certain place. But you can actually change that in your settings or choose that in your settings. So here's the post. I think the post is easy to read. I would go with, um, I would still do some uh, subheaders allotted. So like three quick tips for self-motivation. I would like to see tip one be just as big as this like as a uh, subheader. So like I can't, I'm trying to find where that tip is and I have to actually read it. It's kind of hard to find those three tips. Like see here, my last tip is starting small. So I would have like right here, have it as an H2 tag. I'm guessing this is an H2 tag. We can change that as an H2 tag and make your three tips your, your subheader. So an example would be how I've kind of how I've got it over here is what I'll do is I'll take a text and highlight it and then I'll use the heading two, which is the H2 tag. Actually I just changed it to paragraph, so there, change it back. And that can do a lot of different benefits. Some people think it shows Google what your um, article's about. So some of your keywords can can be placed as these H2 tags. Um, but regardless, I think it's good for just reader usability if you put in some, some of those uh, H2 tags, kind of break this up. So th three quick tips for self-motivation. Quick tip number one, blah, blah, blah. Quick tip number two, blah, blah, blah. Quick tip number three, start small. So I love that you have this box here at the bottom. I'd say the same thing for you a lot is get a picture here. And maybe you've had the same kind of struggle. Um, I don't know if you've been on the whole time, but we talked about gravatar.com. can help you make sure you have a picture that's associated with an email address. So it's whatever email address is connected to uh, connected to this in your WordPress profile. So I definitely would make sure you get your picture. Um, work with me, events about me. So you got a great picture here, quote. Yeah, I love all this. The inspiration behind it. Top articles. Here you are again promoting the free webinar, your products, contact information, a way to get your free gift. Yeah, that's a good about page. Um, I mean, I love the, the logo you got going here. It shows this mom, looks like she's a business person, she's got a phone and a computer, and yet she's got a child. So you're doing great. Hopefully some of that helped. And all right, gang, well, it's 501, and I've got, I think, one more. The last one is Cassie. Cassandra but I think she goes by Cassie. And hers is the Cassie Excursion. Um, dynamic soar, winning over the world one country at a time. All right, let's take a look. 
All right, so you got some pictures going on here. Got a little about you right here. These are some great images. I would, Cassie, what I would do is um, I'd probably get rid of this or if there's a way to move this to it becoming your header. Just me personally, because this is this that I'm looking at right here in my screen is like the, the most prime real estate that you have. And you can probably optimize this a little bit better. So I would either move this up here or you can probably turn this off in your theme. Um, that's what I would do personally. Um, but yeah, I, I like the pictures on the left. I think this looks good. So you got a lot of adventures that people can check out. So that's really cool. Uh, Let's just jump into a random poster. Okay, so you got the sharing, you got pictures, talking about your travels, it looks like, or your different parts of your room. Lots of pictures. You may want to think about, um, since you're doing a lot of these, uh, again, using Pinterest, the uh, Pinterest pennant images, uh, one that when you scroll over it, it says pennant, especially for people who are on Pinterest, because I bet you've got some cool pictures along the way that people may want to love to pin. So I would look at doing that because I'm sure with your traveling and the different places you're visiting, like this picture right here to me just kind of stands out. All this wood looks really cool. So, you know, if there's an easy way to pin this particular image, that's what I would do. Um, so, yeah, it's lots of pictures. And if you're going to have lots of pictures, I think you need to make it easy for people to pin. Uh, looks like you're doing some stuff on Instagram. Uh, see, about me is up here. So yeah, then this is this is all good information. Not a lot to say here. I think the one thing, let's see here. Just curious, clicking around here. Nothing there, okay. I think the one thing that you want to think about is um, how you can turn this passion that you have for for travel and adventure, how can you turn that into? And I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you want to take it beyond just like kind of like a, a hobby blog of, of an online journal. Assuming you want to take that further, I think you really need to think about how you can turn this into a way uh, to earn income by solving some kind of a, a problem or having a solution to something. You know, if somebody wants to know um, traveling tips or like a, a great blog I'm thinking about that you may you may already know about is the guy who does, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Oh, I can't remember now. 
but um, if I remember, I'll come back around to it. But I want you to really think about, okay, all these cool places that you got to travel and these adventures you've been on, um, how could you turn that into a product? What, do, what, do, what experience do you have that somebody else wants to know how to do or to learn about? Or um, maybe it's something as simple as helping people become more adventurous, more um, willing to get out there and see the world. Um, I don't know what it is exactly, but uh, in order for you to take that step, it's got to be, here's the cool adventures I'm on, and here's the lessons I've learned so that you're teaching and it becomes value-added for somebody. So it's more than just kind of like an online journal where someone's just, you know, because if, you, if it's just left to an online journal, you're going to have friends um, and family members read it, and sometimes they are as maybe as loyal. They're kind of on to something else and whatever. They don't come back and read it. And if you really want to, like, build up an email list, you've got to figure out how to, to move your passion from just about you and your journeys to how can it be lessons learned while traveling the world, life lessons learned, or whatever it is that you want to turn it into. How could you teach this? How could you convert this into something that um, could leverage some income? So that's my two cents on that. All right, well, gang, um, that's kind of where we're at. I don't know if there's anybody else who... Oh, I think Neil actually... Neil, I think you may have reached out to me about... And you tell me if you want me to, to um, take a look at your site. I think you did reach out to me. So um, if that's true, maybe just tell me in the chat. If those of you that need to go, you're welcome to. Um, but I'm pretty sure that... And I think yours is a leader campfire... Trying to remember off the top of my head, Neil. I think you're still here. It shows that you're still in the chat, Neil. See if I can find you, Neil, on Google. There you are, Church Leaders Campfire. I knew I could come up with it. Um, okay, so this will be the last one. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to do Neil's on Church Leaders Campfire. Let me start with the domain. The main domain. Okay, well, you Neil, know, you probably have heard me talk about it before. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just not like a huge fan of these magazine feature images that kind of scroll through. Um, to me, I don't know that they that they do a whole lot for people. Um, maybe it's worked well for you for something, but I'm not I'm not sure. Um, you may want to think about turning that off and making it um, more about these main things that you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, I don't know if you have the ability to control like your in the images, but one thing you can do, like see how this image seems very stretched. There is a a plugin. It's uh, actually for Chrome. It's called Let's see. I think it's called it's called Page Ruler. Yeah, it's called Page Ruler. You might not be able to see this, but I can click on this up here in the corner, and it allows me to know the dimensions. So I can know the dimensions that this is a like a 309 by a 129, and then I can make my image look good using like PicMonkey for a 309 by a 129. And again, I don't know what you're able to do as far as pictures, but that'll help it from feeling stretched out. Um, D 
The other thing that I'm trying to figure out, Neil, is where the blog is. So, like, I'm not really sure right now where that is. And I see the home, which is this. I see the thing about consulting, resources. I'm guessing resources might be the blog. Um, but if I click on that, let's see what happens. Yeah, so that's not showing up anything on the page. So maybe it's this help church leaders part portion. So this looks like a page consulting. So that's a page about us. So that explains a little bit about you and what you're doing. Be great to see a picture of you here. Um, So you got some sermons here. That's great. See, it looks like the only way I can figure out how to get to your post is, is over here in the sidebar. So you may be able to, to make this change uh, in your theme settings. I'm not sure what theme this is. Mantra. You may be able to make this setting to change and make your home page your blog. Um, but that's that makes it kind of a little bit harder. So each of those sliding pages is a blog post. Okay. Yeah, Neil, and I know you can totally do an overhaul. You again, you may want to just start off something simple using that that uh, theme. That let's see, I think it was Abby. Just using a real simple theme that allows you to to keep it simple. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Add a halupa theme. This keeps coming up, but um, if you don't want to go the paid route and pay for a theme, I'll post this in the in the chat. But I think this is at least, I think it's a good theme um, for for being free. But it, because it has so many ways to customize it, and you can see the ratings are, are really good with it. So, Neil, I'll just put it in the chat. That would be the theme that I would go with if I was just going with a free theme. Because it's just very customizable, you could you could put your own um, header in it. You can change the colors. You can decide if you want a column on the left or the right. Do you want two columns or three columns? Uh, it's a simple way to kind of get get something going. Um, so you got let's see. So you got an image, a post. So you got discuss on here. You said you got the related post plugin, which that's fine. I would probably upgrade to the in relate so it creates those thumbnail images. Um, I'd probably look at at uh, minimizing some of these categories on my sidebar because it seems like a lot. Uh, looks like you got your feed burner set up. You can probably um, the consulting page. You can make it you like use that contact page. Have uh, the contact form seven. So if you want to, Neil, you can you do a little tweaking with that theme that I just gave you, and I can take a look at it again. Cause I I want to I don't want to keep giving you recommendations if you're not going to stay with this theme and you want to go with something else. 
Um, so if you get that thing going and you want me to take a look at it, just shoot me an email and I'll give you my two cents with it. So, all right. Well, I think we have kind of wrapped everything up and we've gone through the different blogs here and learned some new things. Um, so again, like I said before, be on the lookout. Coming up here in the next couple weeks is a course that I'm going to be releasing um, module by module over the next several weeks. It's going to be Teach Your Passion. I'm going to walk you through the steps, the exact checklist, the exact blueprint that you can use over and over and over again to teach your passion and take something that you're passionate about, turning it into a product or a course, and uh, how to go about earning money launching that out there to your audience and to, to new people. Um, some people say, well, i got to have a certain amount of audience or traffic before it's worth it for me to create a product. I think it's backwards. I think a product actually gets you the attention that you want to get, and a product can really catapult as people share your product, as people take your product, as people walk through your course, um, and they share it with other people, it can be the thing that catapults you. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, so be on the lookout. We've got a lot of great things planned in the days and weeks to come at Blogging Your Passion. So, again, enjoyed hanging out with everybody. Hope you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you later.